Hi, Dr. Paul Jenkins here with five surefire ways to enhance mental strength and resilience. I'll be sharing with you five practical, applicable strategies, but you're already on it. Watching this video all the way through is a great start. Number one, start with gratitude. I could share with you a lot of research clinical experience that supports this idea. You probably even heard it before, but let's power this up because we're not doing the light fluffy version of gratitude. We're going to do the powerful, effective version of gratitude. Are you with me? Here's what I'm talking about. Anybody can be grateful for the good stuff the pleasant things, the things that are already awesome. I'm talking about health and sunshine and family and rainbows and puppies and indoor plumbing. Easy, light, fluffy. We're going hardcore here, okay, with our gratitude because this is what represents the heavy lifting. Think about it, if you go to the gym, and you pick up the lightest thing that you can find and you do two reps with it and then you go home. How much is that gonna help you? See, that's the easy stuff. That's the light fluffy version. What if you pick up some weight, okay? And start pumping that weight and getting some reps in and feel the burn. That's going to have a better effect. And it's the same with gratitude. So here's what I want you to try. Just try this. Find something in your life that is difficult, painful, frustrating, annoying, hard, and find what you're grateful for about that. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be grateful for that hard thing. An example is cancer, okay? And, and I know some of you are dealing with that right now, either in your own life or someone that you love. It hit our family a few years ago, my sister-in-law, just a couple of months from diagnosis to funeral. It's stage four pancreatic cancer. It took her just like that. So what if it's cancer? Okay, I'm not saying be grateful for the cancer. I'm saying open it up. Okay, look inside of there. Rummage around a little bit until you find something that you're grateful for from that thing or because of that thing. What I found from that cancer mess was a relationship with my niece. 20 years old, special needs. She got to live with us for a few months when her mother passed. Okay, now am I grateful for the relationship? Yeah. Am I grateful for the cancer? See, that's harder, but that's where I found it. Let's power up with gratitude. That's number one. The second way to enhance mental strength and resilience is to pay attention to the input. I did a training recently where I showed a set of words to a third of the audience. And these words were banana, yellow, red, apple. So just think about those words. And then I had them close their eyes and I went to the second third of the audience. I showed them a whole new set of words. Braided, pull, tug of war, climb. And then they closed their eyes. And I went to the third section of the audience and I showed them a whole new set of words abuse, sex, violence, crime. Yeah, don't you wish you were in that part of the audience? Then I had everybody open their eyes and I showed them a word that was missing a letter, R blank P E. And I asked them, what is the missing letter? That first group, they jumped in and said, it's an I. And they knew it was an I because that went with the words that I had already showed them. And I asked the second group, What's the letter? And they said, it's an O. It's obvious that it's an O. Meanwhile, everybody in the rest of the room is like, what are you talking about? It's not that, it's what I think it is. The third set, it's an A. Of course it's an A. What is it? It depends on what the input was. And this always works when I do it with a large audience. We get very consistent results of what people think that missing letter is, and it's because of the input. It's not because this group was more deranged or criminally minded than that group. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do with the input. Watch 
the input. Pay attention to what you're putting into your head. What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What is the input that I'm giving to my mind? You know, I love to read books. I've been podcasting since 2007, which is before podcasting was even a thing. And I've interviewed some amazing authors and, and inspiring people who have shared their inspiring stories with me. I'm a junkie for personal development input. In fact, you know what? I've put together my top 10 list. This is current. It changes from time to time. But my top 10 list of personal development books, I'd be happy to share it with you. Just go to drpauljenkins.com forward slash best books. Just the URL that's right there on the screen. drpauljenkins.com forward slash best books. And I'll give you my top 10 list. I'll just send it to you. Input matters. Pay attention to what you're putting in. The third way to enhance mental strength and resilience is what I call mental hygiene. You're familiar with the term dental hygiene, right? You brush your teeth every day. I hope. Otherwise, we have another conversation to have. That's dental hygiene. You're taking care of your teeth, your chops. What are you doing to take care of this? Your mind, the most important part of you. Your mind is so much more important than your teeth. Apologies to all of the dental professionals in the audience today, but I think you'd probably even agree with me. Your mind is even more important. What are we doing on a daily basis to take care of our mind? Now, I'm talking about the inputs like we talked about in the last point, but I'm also talking about who you hang out with what you do on a daily basis to engage your mind in a positive activity. Who is your coach or your mentor? Make sure that you are receiving that kind of guidance and input from people who are qualified to give it. This is all part of your mental hygiene and it makes a difference. I love coaching and that's what I spend my days doing. On our platform, Live On Purpose Central, I show up and do live coaching for all of our members there at least twice a week. And it's because I have benefited so much from coaching. I just hired a new coach. I pay more to coaches than any of my clients pay me. And it's an amazing process. You know, one of my coaches explained it to me this way. She said, you cannot read the label when you're inside of the bottle. And here we are locked inside of our own mind and our own life. We need someone to read the label to us so that we can have the instructions so that we know what we're dealing with. And that's why coaching is so valuable. And to me, that's part of our mental hygiene. Take advantage of it. The fourth way to enhance mental strength and resilience is positive output. And we already talked about positive input. What are you putting into your mind? There's something really powerful about the creative process of positive output. What is it that you're sharing? What is it that you're putting out there into the world that has the potential to benefit the lives of other people? What are you saying? What are you posting? What are you writing? What is the output that's coming from this creative being? In some of our coaching programs, I teach a concept called happy-nomics. And I love that title because it has to do with the interchange between happiness and economics. And it has to do also with production versus consumption. There are producers and there are consumers. When we receive something, we're consuming. When we give something, we're producing. And this has a direct correlation with our mental health. I'm convinced at this point that depression, and I'm not talking about the clinically diagnosable depression that also has some chemical and biological components. I'm talking about the common human experience of depression, I think is tied to consuming more than we produce. And I've seen this throughout my career that when people are in that position where they're receiving more than they're giving, where they're being served more than they're serving, and we all have to receive, we all have to consume, we all have to be served because we're fallible, flawed human beings. But when we consume more than we produce, in the words of one of my friends, we suck. <laughs> Meaning we suck resources that, that we're consuming more than we produce. Do you see that? 
and it has a negative effect on our mental health and on our emotional strength and resilience. This is important. Produce more than you consume. Pay attention to your output. Let's get some positive things coming from you out to the rest of the world. And finally, the fifth way that we can enhance our, our mental strength, our emotional and mental resilience is service. Service. Try this, just do a little experiment. What if you were to, in the next 24 hours, just picture that time frame from right now in the next 24 hours, could you make a meaningful difference in the lives of three separate people? Now, if you want to stretch, make those people people who are outside of your home, your immediate environment. This causes you to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and to stretch. It also gets you focused on production rather than consumption. This makes a big difference. And there's a lot of reasons why service is a powerful way to enhance our own mental health and resilience. I would just give you that as a challenge. Go out and try it, see what happens. I took this challenge on recently and I was surprised. I don't know why I'm always surprised at this, but I was surprised at the powerful impact that it had on me personally. I think you're gonna experience a similar thing. Thanks for being here and for being engaged in this process. You're going to make the world a better place as you start to improve your own mental health. The next video for you is how to reprogram your mind. And I think you're gonna get some good ideas from that. I'll see you over there.